Hey, Kelly. Dr. Shepard. Dr. Shepard. God. Sorry. Damn it. Kelly. Wait, stop. Don't you just hate when TV doctors walk into their patients' rooms and start touching everything without washing their hands or putting on gloves? It drives me crazy. The real drama here is that you probably just passed along antibiotic-resistant bacteria to your patient. Thanks, Dr. Dreamy. Did you know every year roughly 300,000 patients suffer from colostrum difficile infection? C. diff is a gram-positive obligate anaerobic bacteria. It's ubiquitous in nature and really be only becomes a problem when patients have abnormal gut health. Infections can lead to short-term diarrhea, but also to more serious issues like acute inflammation of the lower GI tract. When that happens, the resulting pseudomembranous colitis can lead to tears in the intestinal lining, ulceration, and fatal blood infections. This infection is pretty serious. It actually adds about $1.5 billion to annual healthcare costs. Under environmental stress conditions, such as the presence of antibiotics or low concentrations of biotin, C. difficile produces two virulent toxins, A and B. TCDA is the primary virulence factor in CDI and will be the focus of the rest of this video. These toxins are classified as pore-inducing enterotoxins, which means that they specifically target epithelial cells lining the lower GI tract. TCDA is comprised of four structural domains. Each domain plays a fundamental role in the toxin's pathogenic mechanism. Step one, binding. TCDA has a long arm extending from the globular core of the protein, which acts as the toxin's binding region. This is actually the C terminus of the protein sequence. If we zoom in on this region, we can see repeating long and short strands linked by tight beta hairpin turns. Sets of these long and short repeats are connected further by polypeptide loops. This structure forms 14 selenioid-like units whose grooved surfaces maximize potential binding sites. Highly hydrophilic residues cover the binding region and have been shown to form non-covalent interactions with protein-anchored carbohydrates on the cell surface. Here, we can see how protein-carbohydrate interactions can occur along the entire face of the C-terminus. Binding induces conformational changes in receptor molecules that initiates endocytosis. Step two, delivery into the cell. TCDA is imported into the cytosol containing a porous endosome. Free hydrogen protons diffuse into the endosome, lowering the pH. The hydrophobic core of the protein becomes protonated, which exposes nonpolar residues. This conformational change anchors the toxin within the endosome while simultaneously exposing the active site of the cutting region. Step 3. Cutting the toxin. Exposure of the hydrophobic core of the toxin leads to a cascade of structural changes which activates a cysteine protease domain located atop the end terminus. Cleavage of the end terminus from the rest of the toxin, translocates the globular enzymatic region into the cytosol, while the rest of the toxin remains within the endosome. Step four, the step we've all been waiting for, activation of the enzyme. The activated globular end terminus travels into the cytosol, where it targets a class of GTPase enzymes, Rho, RAC, and CDC42. The core of this biologically active domain is surrounded by alpha helical stacks, which create a charged pocket 
for the binding of UDP glucose and target enzyme substrates. Here we can see this region in complex with UDP glucose. Two notable residues responsible for stabilizing this complex are serine 517 and the aromatic tryptophan 519. Under SN2-like conditions, TCBA catalyzes the hydrolysis of UDP glucose, irreversibly transferring the glucose group to a highly conserved threonine residue on the substrate protein. Glucosylation inactivates these GTP SACE enzymes by blocking upstream phosphorylation activity. This disrupts signal transduction pathways responsible for controlling several cell functions, which we can actually see on this figure. In epithelial tissues, in the GI tract, this most noticeably disrupts proteins responsible for maintaining the cytoskeleton, leading to apoptosis. Once epithelial cells die, they lyse, and their biological materials can be uptaken and digested by the bacterial colony. 